So the paper of August 2022, question one. Uh, it is asking, distinguish between solicited proposal and unsolicited proposal. Uh -huh. From our notes, what did we write? Uh -huh. Solicit a proposal. You say, ma'am? So, the student can solicit a proposal is the one that can receive them with a request. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. yeah, so solicited, uh, we said it is the one that is written uh, after request. So this one is written in response to a request, in response to a request. So someone has requested that you do a proposal. And uh, unsolicited, uh, unsolicited proposal, it is written without any what, any requests. You just write for your own reasons. So no one has asked you to write but for whatever reasons you decide, I'm going to write the proposed. Uh, explain four roles of a set that in a communication. Yes, okay. Yes, that's good enough. <laughs> that's good enough. These things are not very difficult. You see, there is the key thing, there is the key word. The keyword when I'm marking this paper, I will look at the issue of the requests. So, do we have the requests? That's solicited. Do we have no request? That is unsolicited. But if you take a collaboration now, you can add a few other words. Add a few other words. Once it will be a, the, the request could have come from the company, the request could have come from uh, a sponsor wants to sponsor a particular project to achieve a particular objective. Yeah, the unsolicited could be written uh, yeah, as a way of looking for money or as a way of academic excellence. You can beat your way around the bush, uh, but the key thing is the solicited is that we have a request, and solicited we have no requests. Oh, yeah. The next one is uh, roles of a sender in a communication process. Roles of a sender in a communication process. Communication process. We say the communication process as the sender. We have the message, we have the receiver. So what do you think are some of the roles of a sender? Uh -huh. Some? Yeah, generate the idea. Generate the idea of the information to be sent or of the message to be sent be sent. Good. Uh -huh. Keep on forgetting his name. Areas. Good. Uh -huh. Areas, any idea? Yeah, it is him to select the most effective the most effective means of communication, means of sending the, the message, means of sending the message. 
is him to know how do I communicate, which is the method. Let's take the encoded message. Yeah, he encodes the message. Encodes the message. Uh -huh. Something else? Kevin? Yeah, he's going to receive the feedback. He receives the feedback and interpret it. Eh? Yeah. So those are the roles of uh, the sender. Analyze six circumstances which may necessitate a presenter to make use of visual aids. Use of uh, or need for visual aids. Now, when we talk about the need or the use of visual aids, we are talking about the importance, we are talking about the advantages the reasons as to why you may want to use uh, the visual aid. So, uh, Dekla, any idea? Why would you want to use the visual aid? Yeah, as a means of emphasis. Means of emphasis. Or the message. So you want to use a visual, something in our camera. It's a way of uh, emphasizing what is it that you are communicating. Uh, do you have anything else? Yeah, when uh, explanation can only be done using the explanation, can only be better done using the aid. You know, there are some things that are so abstract. They can't figure what is it that you're saying. It's until you bring it that someone is able to see that this is uh, what you're talking about. Uh -huh. What else? And I hope we covered these things. Did we cover the use of visual items? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I uh, give us another example. Yeah, dealing with the uh, illiterate. Eh? Illiterate. That's how we write the word illiterate. How do we write the word? Illiterate people or audience. Number Illiterate. So if you are talking to people who cannot read, uh, again, are uh, closely related to that. When there is a communication, what? When there is a language, barrier. When there is a language barrier. When there is a language barrier, uh, it is also important to use the visual aids. Anything else? When, I would say when you want to engage the audience. Yeah, engaging the audience. Engaging the audience. You want to engage the audience. You want them to be more interactive. Uh, or you want to make the presentation more exciting. Yeah, you could uh, either give them as separate. If you have very many points, you can give them as combined. If you have very few points, you can still separate them. Yeah. So you want us to give it a separate. 
It could be seen as a sin, see it also as. But in most cases, it should be the same. And then dealing with the hearing and Yes, even uh, uh, dealing with audience, having hearing difficulties, hearing difficulties. So if you are dealing with people who have hearing problems, have hearing difficulties, then uh, it's better to use the visual aid. The beauty with this paper is that if you are an art, you should not read that exam without writing all the answers. Right. Okay, so that is question one, which we have finished. Question two, explain four functions of nonverbal communication. Functions of nonverbal communication. I think we also cover this. Again, when you see the word function, it is the other word for advantages, it is the other word for purpose, the other word for objectives, and so on. So, project, you can give us one. Yeah, it is substitutes. One, it is it substitutes or complement. You can uh, have both. Eh? It is substitutes. Verbal communication. You can decide I'm not talking a word. No, like those days when the uh, visitors would come to your home, you can in your your generation, and you want to misbehave, and your mother will just give you a look, <laughs> and then you behave appropriately yeah? without saying what, what, you might do what has happened, what you have been told. So that is, uh, although nowadays now when children misbehave. Calling them Kapapa. <laughs> so those days you'd be given a look and you know what it is. So closely related to that, then we say it complements. Complements. Verbal. Communication. It makes it to be complete. Because it's able to illustrate the emotions and so on. Uh, what else, Kevin? It gives ascent. 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 In terms of So it gives tonal variation. Tonal variation or acid. Acid. Namna e. A S C. A S C. A S C. N T. Acid. You mean? You don't know the tonal variation. You mean what was that? Ascent, that's going to be Is that how the word ascent is written? The one, that one for ascent is your pronunciation. The ascent is the way the rest is falling off. When I say, come here. Oh. 
Oh, there is a difference, eh? Yeah. Okay, okay. So this one is tonal variation. Yeah. Now I'm when you I'm pronouncing it. Eh? Yeah. Oh, now I understand. Okay. So what all of them can do. Okay, awesome. Okay. Ah, yeah. we got to how many? Four. So we want another one, Sam. Used to show what? Choose attitudes and emotions. So when you are expressing your emotions, you must be nonverbal. And I think nonverbal is the most sincere. It's the most sincere. It's very difficult to, to fake. To fake the connection between your emotions and your body movements. Yeah. If you are happy, it's very difficult to start crying. And you are, if you are unhappy, even if you start smiling, we can still tell your smile is not genuine. But what? What you can use them to say completely opposite of what you mean. Okay. And that's why it's very, very important when you want to do a serious engagement, it is better than face to face. Don't do it over the phone. Because when you're there face to face, you can be able to see beyond the words of the person. Okay. Uh, types of listening. Types of listening. Types of listening. I take you to Isoma. So you go to the notes in Isoma and Kwanza. Ignoring listening. Ignoring listening. Uh -huh. What is that? Zero effort is put to listen. Yeah. Ah, uh, Bridget. Empathetic. Ah, uh, what is that? Empathetic. Listening. Empathy is where you get the shoes of the other person. Eh? Is when you want to be to feel like them. So you, you you are listening like you, you are fitting in the shoes of that person. Mm -hmm. Areas, okay, Tetra. Selective reasoning. What do we mean by that? Yeah, you put emphasis in certain areas. You don't seek to capture everything that is being said. Yeah, you just uh, capture a few things. Uh, uh, Kevin, you have another one? Hmm? Pretending. Here's why you are pretending to listen. But you're actually not listening. So the difference between pretending and ignoring is what? You can be okay, good. Uh, in other words, eh, the speaker can easily see that you are ignoring, but they may not easily know that you are pretending until when they ask a question. Until when they ask a question. I was in a meeting and they called me. I appeared to be listening to where I was on my phone. <laughs> and I really got confused because I had not heard what the speaker had said. And sensing that is like, I have not heard. Now he continued to say, after Kimami, we have so and so and so. Then he came back now to me. So I was there. I appeared like I'm listening, but I'm not listening to what is happening. And uh, 
Yeah, there, there, there are many reasons as to why you would want to be what? I wanted to talk about this one, to be selective. Many reasons why you would want to be selective. Uh, I've seen even in classes when you are teaching, you find students also become selective. They decide what to write and what not to write. Yes. Uh, assume you are a manager in an organization. Describe four factors that you might take into consideration when giving oral instructions to employees to perform a task. Sasa hiyo hatukusoma kitu kama hiyo. Ama tulisoma. That's a general knowledge question, eh? So what are some of the factors that you need to consider when you are giving oral instructions? If you are instructing people, Mm -hmm. it should be clear and complete instructions. It should not be unambiguous. Although those ones you could still give them as two points. Yeah, you could give them as two points. <laughs> <laughs> but as I'm saying, if you have many points, there is no problem. But kama umekwama na toa hii inajitika na batu. Actually this one is uh, it's asking up about the characters of good communication, eh? Yeah. Actually you see the 76. The 76 can quickly be here. 76 of communication. Aha, uh -huh. what else? <laughs> Yeah, it should be courteous. And as much as you are the boss, don't give people instructions in a way that is very disrespectful. Ah, Bridget? Yeah, it should be simple. Don't be very complicated. When you are complicated, people will not understand what is it that you want them to do. Uh, yes, should be. You should be audible when you are talking. Yes, there should be audibility. Don't talk uh, in a way that people are struggling to hear. And some of these fellows, they normally create an environment that you should not ask them a question. So it is you to go trying to imagine what is it that he has said. And uh, we normally see these things, especially if the person is bitter, even in our homes. Eh? Uh, so we should be careful in how we talk. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you should be careful in how you talk. Yes. Yeah. And you should be careful in how you talk. Yes. And you should be careful in how you talk. Yes. And that person now is there waiting for you to do the wrong thing. <laughs> so uh, there, there should be on the page. Uh -huh. Those are enough points. But uh, now that you can see this one has eight marks, eh? you can still try to explain to the dog. Eh? No. Uh, question number three. <clears throat> Justify five reasons why an executive summary is important in a report. Nipeana types or other components of a report. And we talked about executive summaries. Yeah. yeah. So what are the benefits of executive summary? Executive summary. Uh -huh. Number one, Kevin. Yeah, overview of contents of the report. 
of the reports. Good. Uh, some. Let me see. It shows on the report was a page. Hmm? On the report was a page. Yeah. Details. How the report was obtained. Ah, uh, what else? Objects. <laughs> Yeah, it makes enhances understandability or understanding. Enhances understanding of the report because it has been shortened. Eh? You are not reading a lot. Huh? Else? Mm -hmm. Anything else, sir? Kevin, <laughs> yeah. no how many reasons? Five. Where did we cover that? Executive summary. Executive summary. Longer and more executive summary. I can see for longer. Why did you write? At the symposium, the yeah, symposium, what are you on? Your conferences, the Kakuja Kwa report. How are we talking about the terms of reference and the dates on top of these ones? We talked of shoes, uh, terms of, I can remember us talking about that. Terms of reference, what is it that you are taught to, to pursue? And uh, Number five, to the period of the report. The period of the report. The period or the dates of the report. As you should be writing in the book. 
Oh, yeah. The next one is suggest five ways in which a code of conduct might assist an organization in promoting ethical behavior. Code of conduct. Code of conduct regarding behavior. Uh-huh. We saw my ethical standards, eh? Or ethical issues. Uh -huh. Number one. To ensure us there is what? Confidentiality. So when there is now the question is asking, eh? How does it promote ethical behavior? People adhere to uh, confidentiality is adhered to. What that means is some information about me which is confidential. If you comply with the uh, confidentiality com uh, concept, it will prevent you from God telling other persons about what I yeah. But if you are unethical, if you don't respect confidentiality, as soon as I'm finished telling the story, you go calling people and telling them the, the story. Yeah. Uh, what else? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, integrity is upheld. What is integrity? What is integrity? Moral standards. Eh? Moral standards. Uh, what do you think integrity is? Eh? Yeah, integrity has to do with doing the right things and more so uh, being faithful. Even when no one is observing you. What is that? Diligence is doing good, uh, something in the best way possible. You are diligent, you are a hard worker, you are a smart worker. You do it in a very smart way. Yeah. You don't leave anything to chance. That's what we call of, uh, diligence. Yeah. But integrity it is when you are doing things the way they should be done, even when no one is observed. And that's what in other circles they would refer to as character. That's what they would refer to as character. And uh, why it is demanded is because in the course of duty, there will be many things you'll be put to do when no one is supervised. Maybe you are handling finances, like now we are training you to become accountants. So you are there handling finances of the company, no one is looking at you. So how do you behave? Yeah. Uh, anything else? How does the code of conduct? To some of my ethical behaviors, advantages of uh, Ethical communication, rules of ethical communication. Huh. If you look at your notes, we talked about uh, the roles of ethical communication. We talked of it builds a positive corporate culture. We talked of reducing financial abilities. It boosts consumer confidence. The boo builds teamwork. It respects privacy and confidentiality. And it helps people to accept responsibility. So we can uh, get a few more there. 
there is issue of accepting what? Responsibility. And this is a major deficit in most of us. We really accept what? Responsibility. You always want to blame others except yourself. We have reasons. Okay. Uh -huh. What else? There is what? There is teamwork. Enhances teamwork. I told you when you are in an environment where people are ethical, you can work as a team, you don't fear. But if you are in an environment where people have bad manners, you feel like you do not want to belong there. You cannot work as a team, yeah? especially when there is no one superior. It's a class like this one when maybe there is no teacher. Some of us will feel uncomfortable because of the bad manners that are taking place. But when good manners are the order of the day, then we are all very comfortable in a class. We are all very comfortable in an office. We are all very comfortable wherever we are. Uh -huh. What else? Enhanced customer relations. Customer relations. We are able to deal with our customers well because we are ethical. Otherwise, you've got some places where people are unethical and you have customer and uh, they just misbehave. They have insults. Like what Makanga before Mishuki used to do. You get to their vehicle, you are their customers. You don't. But they harass you there. And you are a customer. So... That is also more of a general knowledge question. Ah, yeah. The next one is uh, you have been tasked by your organization to create a media advertisement of a new product. Assess five factors that you may consider while creating the advertisement to avoid criticism. Characters of a good advert. I don't know whether we talked about advertisements, did we? Uh -huh. Or oh, you already have the points. Uh, factors to consider in an advert. You already have them. Give factors to consider an advert. Uh -huh. Yeah, you must check durability of the advert. How long do you want to use it? Uh -huh. Uh, it could be the same, it could be the same. Continuity. Continuity. How do you want it to, or for how long do you want it to remain? Like, uh, <clears throat> there are some adverts I do, and previously I would put dates on the advert. Like now when we are announcing the May intake, I would say the May intake is on 8th of May. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Sisi tusamisa tumekuwa kidogo. Eh? <laughs> Mambo ya funga fungua. <laughs> Kama mlikuwa high school na primary ndio wanafunga one day two days. Funga Friday pale kwa shule. Yeah, eh. Eh, but maybe effectively masomo ya dance up to the But you normally put it that way because there are also other people out there who are not going to be able to do it. Because we know who are not going to be able to do it. So, that's what I mean. We are going to be able to do it. So, that's what I mean. But maybe it starts with some more out of 15. So now I was saying, Nikweka hii hati bati hivi, either of me. Now this one can only be used for this year. Next year, most likely hati afungua tala enane. So I'll have to make a what? Another hati bati. But if I wanted to continue or to be durable, Then what we do, we don't put the date. We just write what? Date. And again, this one, it can only be used in the month of, month of May. So if you want it to be used every month, then you drop the word what? May. And you're just left with what? Intake in progress. So once you design those adverts, you can use them any time of the month. Yeah, so that's something you need to do. Consider. Aha. Uh -huh. Elias. Then the media channel. What which media are you going to use? Are you going to use TV? Are you going to use print media? Are you going to use radio? Are you going to use posters? Are you going to use billboards? Are you going to use social media? And so on. Uh -huh. Checker. Yeah, which message are you communicating? The message to be communicated. What are you saying? Are you calling us for a product launch? Are you calling us for the price? Are you calling us for the intake? Are you calling us for Maybe a celebration. What is it that you? Uh, is it a reminder? Is it uh, meant to uh, attract new customers who have never been with you? So all those considerations must be made. I have Bridget. Then. Yeah, good. The costs. How much will it cost? You? Very important. How much will it cost you? Uh, there are some mediums that are very expensive. Others are cheap. Like to advertise uh, in the newspaper, how much do you think it costs? Not an eighth, but a small piece. <laughs> Any idea? But you know they're a small piece, eh? It's called eighth. An eighth. The whole things I did one, but um, the years 2013, 2015, it would go for around 120,000. Huh? <laughs> so sorry, it could be almost uh, 150,000, 200,000. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Adverts are very expensive. Huh? Or you think they're cheap? What do you think? I thought it would be like 20,000. <laughs> they are very, very expensive. Yes. 
People who are the people. It depends on uh, what to expect. Eh? It depends on what. Like now, uh, those times we used to do like two of them in a semester. Oh, that's fancy. My TV. I Thank you. 
Motivation of a Jew. Motivation. Motivation. When is it? What are we doing? 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 Those <laughs> Uh, 
Físico bias. Effective communication. Ah, sabe? Rede. Rede. The physical barrier. Uh, how does it become a barrier? Yeah, it's not the way, the use of language, even the perception, eh? Yeah, because either you are too old to know or too young to know the topic that you have about it to discuss. Right? Noise. Uh -huh. How does noise become a barrier? That's why it distracts, eh? Aha, uh -huh. okay. <laughs> body language. How does body language become a bind? Uh, when you try to communicate and you see the body language of the individual is not welcoming. Well, not welcome, it's not receiving the information. Yeah, not receiving the information. I uh, have good uh, budget. Distance. Distance. How does it prevent communication? The medium. And uh, again, the cost involved, eh? and even the, 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 like now what I'm doing, if we're using oral, there is only the far, this voice of mine can go. Beyond that now, people will not be able to this, uh, hear what I'm saying. Good, citing relevant examples, analyze five effects of modern communication. So when we talk about modern communication, Kevin, what comes to your mind? The bigger one to capture all of them. Technology, good. We are talking about technology. And if we are talking about technology, uh, what are some of the effects? Mm, some? There is enhanced confidentiality. Eh? Confidentiality. Yeah. Nowadays, with these phones, people are very confidential. Uh, I could be discussing something with someone, something which you do not like. And we are there and you may not know. Like what children are doing nowadays, or even actually, let me say, everyone. Someone was saying that uh, even a couple, uh, you are communicating with them when you are with your spouse there. Eh? message <laughs> Yeah, you even describe your spouse. I don't know about your And the messages are going, see? You? Yes, there is a lot of confidentiality. And uh, also the issue of passwords. Yeah, I'm to a password. Na hizi mapakets, na hizi bio, eh? eh you may not easily really get. Uh, what else? Let us come with this technology. Uh, yeah, the issue of speed. 
you can communicate in a very fast way, very fast way, compared with those Ghana, someone was telling me the days of Telegram. Telegram would take like five days before you can get divided. So we do have a Telegram app, it takes five days. You will pick it somewhere like in the Dorit. So now when you are called Dorit, assuming I'm a young man, you're sick, I'm a bride. So 10 days, you know, I'm a bride. But nowadays, you can even send to the US, whatever the information in Africa, and you also get a reply. Chris? Yeah, there is increased connectivity. Connectivity. Within no time, you are able to know what is happening. We did not type, we are aware that there is a crisis. Uh, what else, Tekra? I wanted to ask is bridging the. Yes. Yeah, I'll uh, talk of this one. Bridging. We have the bridging. Connectivity. We have put the bridge. When you, when you say the effect, is it both positive and the disadvantages or just advantages? Yeah, you can cite both, both ways. Both ways. The effects are both positive and negative. Like now, one of the negatives. Hmm? Weekend socialization. Weekend socialization. People nowadays are not socialized. Especially if there somewhere there is a uh, net. I don't know if this class is just right. Do you? I'm a money to talk about it. I'm talking about it. But I'm sure you have seen these things. Eh? You go to a place. Hmm? <laughs> Sometimes back there is a couple that they visited us. And they had come for some uh, discussion. It was a man and a lady who are planning to have a way. <coughs> So they came to our house for some discussion. And I felt so much offended because all of them were on phone. Nakuja, you may reserve time, you know Angoja, but you know Angoja. Then when you are there, you don't talk to Nazi. Atakama to now where you are on phone. We put up fire. So I had to quickly now minimize my discussion and the reason. Because now there is no opportunity for what? Socialization. Uh, so people are in their own space. And uh, that also threatens what I would call the, the, the community perspective, the, the brotherhood perspective. Because when you are just about yourself, is the world is about you. Yeah. See it in my house when my kids are fighting for the gadgets. I, 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 I don't like it. I think it's a way of, uh, it's a result of lack of what? Socialization. Luna Taka took a gadget. She can see me. She's a computer. She can see me. So that's the world people you are growing into. <laughs> When last did you visit your uh, aunties or uncles? <laughs> That's mine. You can have a. What's your name? A few hours. 
Itaharo, But nowadays, that has become very much weak. Since we're going to end up in a car, even two weeks or even a month, yeah. actually, there are some people who used to think they belong to that family. But the cases are put up the pair.
Ligonga plus Ligonga plus morning. Ligonga will be whenever the other the book is for that. But the next number five. You want to be five, right? Uh-huh. The fifth one, Bridget. Yeah, technical. Technical problems experienced. Yeah? Technical problems. Yeah, technical problems. Uh, there's also the issue of hacking. Exposure. Okay. Question five. Summarize five demerits of grapevine communication. The merits of grapevine communication. Those ones we should recite them like a poem. The merits of grapevine. Communication. Mm -hmm. One. Rumors. Rumors. <laughs> 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 you have another Lacks accountability. Lacks accountability. Uh -huh. Another one. It is a? It is unreliable. Cannot rely on it to say that it is a and they are pure. Kevin? It's unsystematic. Yeah, it's very unsystematic. Meaning that it can be erratic, it can also be a rival of the same note. That rise. Yeah, it may be incomplete or you cannot verify it. Eh? Not verifiable. Not verifiable or it is incomplete. It's, you could also say it's not form. It's not form. Information can be distorted. Yeah, there's distortion. It's distortion. And uh, fortunately or unfortunately, it's the most common. Eh? People like it so much. Good yes, a world of difference. Distortion is where I receive the information from Sam. Then when I'm giving you what I'm giving you is not what Sam told. But yes, I distort it. Yeah. But when I convey what Sam told me to you. And you interpret it now in a different way than what some expected. That's now misinterpretation. This person become a congeza chuli. I'm a congeza chuli. 
maybe someone was just questioning if you you are reporting to me and then I questioned to go <laughs> but I was already seeking to get more understanding. Why is this person setting you? Why do they want it this way? What is it that you can do? Then someone now goes and consulted. Uh, Five tips that you could use when writing an official memoir. Tips in writing a memoir. Uh-huh. We start with take one. Yeah, brief. This need to become a business. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yet. Should be. Time effective or timely. Yeah, let's talk of uh timely or time effective. Time effective means you are not taking a lot of time to write it. Eh? But timely means it is within time. Eh? You are not communicating too early, you are not communicating too late. Uh, last should be should be clear, clarity. That's why I'm saying come as my media, Kevin. It should be relevant, right? To us, a memo that is relevant. Don't give us a memo that does not make sense and does not belong to us. Uh -huh. Some? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, you need to check uh, correct and receive. Simple language and so on. Eh? You have been requested by a manager of Ringroad organization to write a speech for him for an occasion he has been invited as a guest. Describe 10 preparatory steps you will take to develop an effective speech. What are the steps? Now, these steps are just like uh, the factors you need to consider when you want to deliver a speech. Uh, so the steps, you don't have to follow each other. That's what I'm saying, they are factors. The people determine the speech. Check it out. Good. That's a very important point. Time available. For the speech. Consider the time uh, available for the same steps. You consider the time available for the speech. If you come at a whole day, I'm going to have two minutes. What else we get? Yeah, identify this, the, the occasion. It's what we call the speech for the occasion. Eh? If you are invited for a graduation, you don't make a speech similar to that of a wedding. Or you don't go to a funeral and you make a speech for a wedding. You don't go to Dali and make a speech for academic exercise. <laughs> so you must know what is the occasion. Uh -huh. Number three. That's up. Yeah, you must do what we call audience analysis. Audience. You must consider who am I speaking to. That's The dignitaries now maybe you would call them special guests. Special guests. 
you are invited to just speak in an ordinary meeting. Your speech will be different from when you are speaking in the presence of a president or a governor. Uh, you must watch your words. Uh, you must check. Although that can also be hidden here in the audience that are present. Yeah. Uh -huh. Kevin. Number three. Miss <laughs> you can expound them. That's why I'm already saying that this one could be the yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, the age of the audience. The age of the audience. You gather material. You gather relevant what? Materials. Jajua, who you are talking to, you need to gather relevant what? Materials. Uh -huh. Another one, you need to summarize the message. You need to summarize the message. Another one, you need to identify other speakers other speakers what would they be talking about would i be the only one speaking would i be the keynote address speaker you also need to in preparation eh, you need to inquire about the venue inquire or visit the venue it's very very important you go to the hall, what in the can of Nagani? Juicy, I was uh, going to speak somewhere. And in my imagination, I thought there would be a, a, a platform. I thought there would be somewhere to put my gadgets as I speak from there. Only to go and find it's just an open space like this one. So the table that was available to me was uh, two row. It's not somewhere you can keep a gadget and read. And again, that table was also occupied by the facilitators. Eh? So I could not now even place my phone there and read the content. But the beauty is what I was presenting in the picture, so I just put my phone there and I stood up uh, side and I was able to speak what I wanted to speak. Now that one is not very easy to adjust because Mimi, I was prepared, my speech was written. So I was prepared to go and read point by point. Only to get there and get that it may not be possible to read what you do. That's why it's important you go and ask him. Come on, that is how it is. Nigekua already because I will be crammed his points soon. I'm not waiting to go and read. Yeah. Although, even with that, eh, eh, the machines can fail. I remember sometimes back we had a graduation and uh, I was to do a speech. And the laptop, I had not checked. I put a power. So, I put a laptop on it. I can answer some of my speech. After two hours of my introduction, Kadima, and it's a big hall in the jar, graduates and guests. So, when you two are going to my house, you are going to the laptop. You are going to the Kadima. So, I just pretended like I'm still reading. The beauty is I'm the one who had written the, the speech. So I could remember, after come see one by one, I could remember the flow of the, the one. But come and see the speech is a kuadikiwa. <laughs> That's why I don't know whether you have uh, The most recent was uh, the former Ebu governor, Mabora. He went to Mabasa and gave a speech of a different function in presence of the president. 
Speech I think I go my summer like two weeks ago in a different word. And he continued and read. You even wonder when he has given you a summer. And a summer. I will only check as an always that thing. So it happens. Now, <laughs> the other one is uh, practice. Eh? There should always be practice. Practice speech. You should practice the speech. Anytime you're invited to speak anywhere, practice. I keep on telling you, if you're a karuma, 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 Comes out so well. Mm -hmm. What is not tip? Mm -hmm. the tips on how to prepare the speech. When you practice it, you are able to know whether that person is able to experience happiness. I'm able to know when you take soma at a yerewa amahata. You're able to tell. And again, it also helps me in cross checking the accuracy. It also helps me in cross checking the accuracy. Number six, assess five roles of electronic communication in managing uh, modern organizations. I think uh, that is very similar to what we are about the effects. Eh? The effects. What are some of the roles of uh, electronic communication in managing? Number one, there is fast what? Communication, then. Eh? Number two, there is the issue of accuracy. Number three, there is the issue of volume. Number four, there is the issue of the record. Number five, there is the issue of costs. They make communication to be very cost effective. Nowadays, most organizations are not printing the memos, you just write an email. The records are there. You can communicate a lot of information. You don't have to print. Uh, analyze five ways on how you could use voice to enhance effective presentation. I think it will become a good one for the other one. Eh? Use of voice. What did we say? Use of voice to enhance. We talked of some use appropriate tone. Use appropriate what? Tone. Aha, uh -huh. you can keep on posing. Aha, uh -huh. what else? Seven. Use stress on key points. Use stress. Uh, stress key points, stress key points, uh -huh. number four, reject, emphasis to your stressing. Maybe that one will be here, the tone. I'm a volume. We will yeah. call it volume. Volume. Uh -huh. Some? I think it's like to put it. Uh -huh. Number what for this? How many points? Five ways.
The filler words. Filler words in Kama. Yeah. But you see, uh, you should avoid them as much as possible. So now, when you're told to five ways on how you could use voice, eh? you can say the voice should not have what? Fear. Five ethical issues in communication you have to resolve, eh? Uh -huh. One, ethical issues in communication. One, The Trisoma at the last. We saw growing. Uh huh. Number two. Secrecy, and these ones we call them the, the dilemmas, eh? The secrecy, do you remain confident, uh, confidential about the same? Get to know some information. You know we could be friends, eh? Three of us are friends. And I happen to know the two of us know something about you. Why they like maybe you are married? I know your wife was a spouse, and I get some information about her, which is not good. Should I tell you? <laughs> yeah? I should not. You should keep it. Yeah? Okay, I'm going to do it. So, those are issues that uh, people have to deal with. Uh, two more or three more. <laughs> Yes. Uh -huh. What else? The leakage is eh? The leaks. And rumors and rumors and ghosts. Number five, the legalities or the legal issues. The legal issues must be considered. Five roles of circulars and news letters. Some are roles of circulars and newsletters, and eh? how they are used. Roles of circulars and newsletters. In other words, it's simple reasons why we need communication in a company because they are used to communicate. <laughs> communicate orders. Communicate orders. Uh, what else? Yes. Yeah, which information? 
communicate reports, then they modify that. When people have been given orders, they report back. Eh? Uh -huh. What else? Yes. They? Remind. Yeah, they remind. Or they act as reminders. They clarify. Clarification. Uh -huh. And number five. They can be used to advertise, especially if they are going to be used for external communication. But even internally, we also advertise. Eh? That's why we hear the office was an internal advert. Yeah. Especially jobs, tenders, and so on. Five powers of person chairing a meeting. We are the chair. What are the powers available to the chairman? Uh, yeah, bring meeting to order. Bring meeting to order. Kevin? Yeah. Okay. Starting and ending the meeting. Yeah, although starting could also be bringing the order, eh? but ending now is different. Elias? Yeah, recognize. Special attendees. Like we say, there are some people who will come to the meeting, they are not members of the meeting. Maybe they are accountants, they are lawyers, they have come to explain a particular thing. Uh -huh. Some? Determine what we call quorum. Eh? Determine quorum. Good. Abrogate. Uh, Is this chairman? That's more of the secretary. More of the secretary. But obviously, they have to agree with the chairman. Eh? Yeah, but some people would be good to say that's more of a secretary. Huh? Order disorder is out. We put that. You order this order is out. We will get a support in the meeting. The chairman can now. Uh, maybe the one that uh, Bridget is talking about is called the meeting. Call the meeting. The chair who should call the meeting. At a common secretary and a communicate should be known that the chair who has asked for the meeting. Meaning of lateral communication. What is lateral communication? Lateral mm -hmm. communication is communication between co workers. Co workers exactly means what? The same yeah. level. Because we could be co-workers, but we are not in the same level. The communication among staff who are at the same level, the same level of management, the same level of management. Yes, now give me some advantages. These ones are just advantages of communication. When you drop the word lateral, then we are going to the advantages of communication. Come to the to the that's why you are a member of whatever. Ah, one. Uh, 
Yeah, it enhances teamwork. Kevin? Uh, okay. Yeah, it enhances interactions. Enhances socialization. Let me use that one. I uh, have to get. Yeah, exchange of ideas. Exchange of ideas. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Alliance promotes unity. Promotes unity. Uh -huh. Kevin? Yeah, there is productivity. When people are united, when people are working as a team, enhances conflict what? Resolutions, eh? Conflict resolutions. Because I to And finally, what are the four organizational barriers that may interfere with the transmission of information in an organization? Uh -huh. Organizational barriers. One. Yeah, departmental conflicts. But mental conflicts. When you join us in the job market, you realize that these conflicts are so light. I was in a meeting of a company the other day, I was told that these persons or this group is for this department, they cannot come near this other people. And they work in the same company. <laughs> For various reasons. Why do people why do you think they are without an enemy? It is when there is a feeling that some people are more favored than the others. Eh? Or you feel that some others are juniors. Uh, what else? Bureaucracies, eh? Bureaucracies. Bureaucracies. As in, 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 what else? What else? The approvals. Approvals that are required in those bureaucracies. You approve. And then we have what we call the organization culture. The culture is there, the practice, the way things. Uh, are done for no very good reasons people behave in a particular way so we can call it a day at that point